Good morning and welcome to Bread of Life, Daph Lutheran Church. It is good to have you here in worship with us today. My name is Michelle Lewis. I'm the pastor at Bread of Life. And I am Dorothy Sparks. I'm the deacon at Bread of Life. And my name is Wendy DeVore, and I am the interpreter for today. We are glad and grateful that you are here with us. And we uh, remember as we gather together that it is God who gathers us. We are far apart from each other, staying home, keeping our physical distance from one another. And at the same time, we are attending to our spiritual needs and our social needs through this gathering in worship. So, as we have been doing in these months when we have been separated, we will light a candle to remember that we are not alone, that through God's amazing power, through God's life and spirit, we are drawn together. And we light a candle here in worship, and we invite you to light a candle in your home as well, to remember that through the light of Christ, we are together. So at this time, I'll light a candle and invite you to do the same. And as we enter into worship, I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths, deep cleansing breaths. Focus on the light of the flame as it dances and moves. Allow your body and yourself to settle and to enter into worship with God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, move, swirl, and dance among us. Remind us that you are always present, encouraging and drawing us in and inspiring us to be the loving people who created us to be. Stir us during this time together to walk humbly, embrace love, and to do justice in our unjust and fragmented world. Amen. So before I do the reading today, I would like to give some background information on the city of Corinth. So this area is a lot of people from Corinth came from Italy, Greece, and Egypt. And they would come to this city for commerce and for trade. And so it was a very busy city. 
and people of diverse cultures would meet and sell things. And you could say that it was very similar to the life that's lived in Las Vegas, a very wild life. And in this city, there were many different kinds of idols. And these idols were meant for worshiping different gods. And there were many different cult practices around these gods. And they would offer different things to these idols, such as food or other material goods. And in offering these things, they would hope that the gods would accept them. And so they would wait to see what would happen. And then they would wait and wait and wait. And now the reading of today, Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, the founding of the church at Corinth. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, where he met Aquila, a Jewish man from Pontus. Not long before this, Aquila had come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because the emperor Claudius had ordered the Jewish people to leave Rome. Paul went to see Aquila and Priscilla and found out that they were tent makers. Paul was a tent maker too, so he stayed with them and they worked together. Every Sabbath, Paul went to the Jewish meeting place. He spoke to Jews and Gentiles and tried to win them over. And now a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. And this is a letter that Paul had written to the church members in Corinth. My dear friends, as a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ, I beg you to get along with one another. So Paul wrote, my dear friends, as a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ, I beg you to get along with one another. Do not take sides. Always try to agree in what you think. Several people from Chloe's family have already reported to me that you keep arguing with one another. They have said that some of you claim to follow me, while others claim to follow Apollos and Peter or Christ. Has Christ been divided up? Was I nailed to a cross for you? Were you baptized in my name? 
I thank God that I did not baptize many of you. There were some, but not one of you can say that you were baptized in my name. Christ did not send me to baptize. He sent me to tell the good news without using big words that would make the cross of Christ lose its power. The message about the cross does not make any sense to lost people. But for those of us who are being saved, it is God's power at work. And now I would like to share my sermon. So I would like to um, just share some of my most recent experiences. So several weeks ago, as you may recall, Minneapolis and St. Paul experienced numerous uh, riots that had taken place throughout the metro area. And during that time, I had to leave my apartment um, because the riots were just uh, blocks away from my home and I had to go and stay with some friends. Now, when I returned, I uh, got into my car and drove through the alleyway behind my home um, out to the street. And I noticed that there were many people out walking around and cars were parked all over and this was not, of course, a normal activity uh, that would take place in my neighborhood. So as I continued driving, I passed the Holy Trinity Church, and I saw that members there were handing out bottled water and masks. And then one block from there, uh, at the post office um, that was the neighborhood office was now totally destroyed. And I knew two employees who worked there that were deaf and now the post office no longer stood. But I saw that there were people there volunteering uh, to clean up the debris that had occurred from the riots. And so I was seeing people assist with masks and water and cleaning up the debris and so during the time of the riots, I was staying with some friends. And on the news, uh, there was the, the chief of police of Minneapolis and the mayor, and they were just amazed by the outpouring of the volunteers. And they had declared that because of their work, that hope was here. Uh, last Monday, a friend of mine took me, uh, we went to a hearing church and uh, we made recordings uh, to prepare for uh, the service that you will see next week on July 5th. So you will see that sermon um, and that service that, that we were a part of. And during that recording, there were four uh, black individuals that shared their experience and their feeling through song. And they also expressed about all of the oppression that the black people have experienced. And so they were sharing their frustrations and yet their hope. They still continue to hold on to hope after all of these years. And so I would like to talk about hope and what does that mean for us in today's time and to hang on and not to let go of this hope, in spite of the fact that the Black community and Black people have experienced oppression over the last 400 years.
So let's look at this word hope. And I want to ask you, where does it come from? So my hope comes from him, from God. Now, hope is not only up there, up in the sky, but hope is here, right here among us, down here on the ground and within us. So where do we find this hope? It resides within our hearts, with each and every one of us. You have hope within you as well. And you might ask, really? So let me share an example. I was reading uh, a book about a man who was born without any arms or legs. So he had a small left foot and that's all that he had. And of course, people looked upon him and took pity and felt that he probably had no hope in his life. But God still used him and God did have a plan for him. Throughout his life, he traveled over 20 countries and shared his faith. And even more, he was able to swim and play sports. He was able to surf. And he was the epitome of hope. He was married and had four children and he had a family. And so he lived his life with and in hope. And he provided and gave inspiration and hope for other people as well. His hope is here. So God's hope is present and is among us. Another example. In the 19, in about the 1960s, deaf people were embarrassed to sign in public. They didn't have a lot of pride um, in their language or in themselves until Dr. Stokes, a professor at Gallaudet, did research on the deaf community and linguistically discovered and declared that ASL, American Sign Language, was a language. And when the deaf community began to hear this, their, their community began to soar and deaf people began to feel that they had a legitimate language and a culture. And so, and, and that God created sign language and allowed us to be creative with it, this language. And now I'd like to share a gospel story of the Samaritan woman who went to the well. And Jesus was there and he had asked her for some water. And she was taken back by this because he was a Jewish man. And at that time, uh, culturally, Samaritans and Jewish people were not to interact or even to speak to one another. And yet Jesus had asked her, a Samaritan woman, for some water and engaged with her in conversation and shared many wisdom, a lot of wisdom with her. And so she was inspired by this and ran back to town and told all the other people and brought them, she brought them to Jesus. And he knew things about her life. And she was not favored in the community. And so she was a person without hope. And yet when Jesus took the time to meet with her and share with her, she ran to the town and brought people back to meet with him 
And he stayed for two days to continue to share God's wisdom and hope and life for all of them and brought unity among the people there. And so these people experienced hope within their life. And hope is a very beautiful thing. And so now I would like for us to take time to think about how America has a significant problem with injustice. The black community have, has been oppressed by our judicial system. And we may look at the black community and say that due to all of this oppression, that they might not have any hope. And where is this justice? Where can we find it? And why are we afraid to enact justice? So I encourage you to do some more research on the history of the Black community and, and look more in depth. Take the time to learn about all the different kinds of oppression that they have experienced in the last 400 years during the time of slavery, when, when their children were taken from them and, and sold. And this oppression has continued throughout many generations and in many different forms and contexts. And our judicial system is not just for the black community. And we need to fix and rectify our justice system so that it is just and fair for all. I believe that once the criminal and justice system is restored, that overall, crime will be reduced. And so what are some of the things that we can do to restore this justice? And one of the first steps is to actually listen. There was a, a meeting where at a table there was one black woman, woman and four other white women and they were saying that they would like to be of assistance and to help her somehow. And she said, just listen to me. Just listen, listen to the stories that we share. And instead of taking action and thinking that we know what we need to do to fix this, just sit and listen to what the black community has to share. And you are precious in my eyes. When God looks at all of us, at all the different color of people, everyone is precious in God's eyes. God cherishes everyone. So now I would like to close with this final story. There was one deaf man who had called a place of business and he needed someone to come out to help uh, fix something on his computer. So the serviceman who showed up uh, was black and he came into the home and uh, fixed the computer and was able to make the computer run again. And this deaf man who was white uh, showed him a picture of uh, his trip to Africa and to Haiti. And so this black man looked at all these uh, pictures 
And then before this man left, this deaf man hugged him. And I'm sure that this serviceman felt inspired and that through this positive interaction that he experienced hope, that there is unity. And just by sharing with one another and not to be afraid of other people, we are the ones that need to fix our fear uh, to, so that we can be just. And that, that now concludes my sermon. And now prayer for others. Save us, O oh God. From ourselves when we fear to confess. From racism covered up with nice words. From the lies of white supremacy that are hidden. From microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance. From apologies when they do not give way to action. From forgiveness without facing the truth. From reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O oh God, when we accept, expect our siblings of color to keep doing our emotional work. We are grateful for the long arc that bends towards justice. We pray, grant us wisdom, Give us the courage for the facing of these days that we share in Christ Jesus. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. and also with you. At this time, as we've been doing over these months, please uh, send a text message, write a quick email. Maybe you have your, your note paper and a pen handy and you know who you're gonna write to. Send a note to people to be connected with one another. It is really challenging right now to feel connected. And so we remind ourselves every week that it's important to do this. And so we take a couple moments in our worship service to reach out to one another and share the peace of God with one another. And now it is time to collect the offering. 
and I'm just going to add my little blurb in here. Every, every week I do this, and I've heard back, why are we collecting money? We're not going to the church building. And we're still doing the work that God calls us to do. So yes, we miss being able to go to the church building to be together. But providing worship here online, it still takes us time and energy, checking in with everybody, making sure that our council is meeting, making sure that we're managing our um, bills. All of those things take us take time and energy. And that's what we're called to do. God is calling us to be a um, presence, to share the message of God's love, of the good news that God loves each one of us. And in particular, God calls this community to reach out into the deaf community to share that message, to share the good news that God loves us with deaf people and their families. That's our mission. That's what God is calling us to do. And we are still doing that. We are still doing that even though we're not going and meeting at our church building. We are the church. You and I are the church here and now. And it does take money and it takes volunteer time. It takes energy. So maybe you don't have very much money that you could share, but you say, hey, I guess I have some more time on my hands. Let me know, let Dorothy know. We've got stuff, we've got projects. We can, we can come up with some things to do. Ways for us to share the good news of God's love with deaf people and their families. So, as always, at this time we ask you to prepare your offerings to send them to Bread of Life. Thank you. And now, let us pray for blessings on the world. Holy One, in Creator, in Christ, in the Spirit, you have given yourself to us. We now give back to you. This money that seems so little, this worship that seems so small, these words that never quite get it right. Receive what we offer and transform it by the power of your spirit into enough money, plenty of praise, honest words to proclaim and enact your peace justice, and love in the world. Amen. And now let us pray the Lord's Prayer. And as we um, come to the end of our worship service, we pray that God, that um, the unity that God brings to the world, that it could be known, that we all would know unity with God. It doesn't mean we'd all be the same. It means that we um, understand that we are all valuable to God and that we don't have to fight for God's atten attention. Instead, God loves to shower attention and relationship and focus on us. And so as we get 
as we come to the end of our worship service, we pray now a prayer for the unity of the world. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, kindle in us your holy fire. Give us confidence of your unfailing presence. May we turn to you for hope in times of uncertainty and loss. We ask your comfort for families who suffer the consequences of racism. We ask that you help us to live as Christ's body in the world. That we are people who pray, people who learn from you, people who share life and love our neighbors, people who seek justice, who worship, people who break bread together and share the good news, people who rest and grow in the Holy Spirit. God, unite our world through our common prayers for peace and understanding. and send us out with your powerful love. Help us to depend on you. Restore and renew the beloved community of your world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So at this time, receive the final blessing in this worship service as we prepare to go out. God's Holy Spirit is our advocate. Sent from God in Christ's name. And so now, as you go out, the Holy Spirit teaches you at every step. I remind you of Jesus' words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Because the peace of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit are with you always. As we prepare to go, receive the blessing, the sending. Jesus commands us to come out. And changes our life. From dark caves of struggle to live a full life into the brightness of new joy. So, go out. We are God's resurrected people. We go out in and with God's holy breath. Amen. <laughs>